Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. So today, on behalf of the team, so Professor Bozhang and myself, so actually uh, we introduce our uh, somehow experience and also some thinking about the, our AI, you could say AI experience and the, our result to the AGI, and also we actually develop some kind of software on the web. So we actually, we develop all these things. We, we, we try to make the research open. So the left side, basically, we just open all our research here. And also, actually, all the, these efforts uh, we spin off a company, Zippo AI, and uh, so which actually is valued uh, around the three billion US dollar. So I will first actually also mention a bit about it, Professor Bo Zhang. So um, Professor Bo Zhang is an AI pioneer in China and also leading quite a few uh, very important uh, AI projects in China. And also the most important thing actually is uh, uh, Professor Bo Zhang proposed the framework of the third generation of AI uh, almost 10 years ago. And uh, after that, only a few years after that, actually he founded the Qinghua AI Research Institute. So all of us actually was working in that institute. So well, to start with this talk, I, I still want to ask a question. So what is the most popular applications on the web in your mind? Okay, so because we are talking about the web, right? So I'll give you some hint. So that is my answer to, the, to this question. So this is uh, some kind of box, right? And uh, so, <laughs> So this is probably, uh, that's my answer. Probably you, your answer will be different from this. So my answer is the search engine, right? On the web, so almost everyone wants to search the data and also use the data by search engine. So Google and also Bing and also many, and before, of course, we actually use uh, Yahoo and many, many other soft software like that. Well, now actually we are entering uh, AI, you could say AI generation. So the question is that when web meets AI, so what will happen? So yesterday, actually, I just tried the, the new, you could say, the new AI search engine, perplexity.ai. So I inputted the question, where is the, uh, the web conference 2024, and who is the general chair? I just typed that question there. And uh, you see that the AI, actually, the perplexity.ai, they just they search on the web and uh, find some kind of like a document and they extract uh, some kind of like a, the green one. So, so the conference will be in Singapore and also the general chair is uh, Professor Chua and also Professor Neil. So you will see all the information actually accurately and real time extracted from the web. Okay, so that's very interesting. And also another one, I just give some kind of example. I didn't want to advertise those, those website. So I just give them some example. So this actually is another web, website from China even, thinkenly.ai. So if you ask some kind of question, how to learn Arabic from Daryl, they actually from the web, the right side the list is some kind of web pages. Okay, and they give you some kind of like a summary, but he, by timeline, so left side is somehow like, a, so by the timeline and the, different documents talking about it, something like that, okay. So that basically changed quite a lot. And also, I also want to give you, give you some kind of like example that is somehow like a, how we actually, in our daily life, how we use the web and the use the AI. So last week, when, when, when I was in Vienna, so this is German, okay. So this is basically a menu, so actually I cannot understand that. So I just take a picture, and then I quickly ask the, 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 the you know, a software on the web, and then I say, what, what's this? So, and I also ask a question in Chinese, and then the right side, so the, the software basically recognize the menu, and say, oh, there is some kind of main dish, and also there is a side dish, and also the side is Belgian, Belgian, Belgian is in German, so actually I cannot understand, and also, and also deep. So that's basically the explanation about the, the menu. 
And also, the, the, actually, I was asked, the, what do you want for the beta gun? <laughs> that is somehow like, a, so I, I, again, I just ask a question, please, please explain beta gun. And then here is the explanation. So there is means that there, there are six choices and with the translation to Chinese. And also for the deep, again, I ask a question, can you just explain the, the deep? And then it, there will be some kind of like a, like a choices and also the translation. So well, I just want to say actually the, the, the AI and also the, when AI meets web, so things just change quite a lot. So yesterday I just checked it on the web. So Google, of course, is still the top. Okay, still the top. I mean, daily traffic, okay. And also being the traffic is also very large. But, but you, you will see, there, here is some other, like uh, the traffic of the other AI-based, uh, you could say search engine, or some other software, like uh, perplexity and the meta. Here the meta is not a meta.ai. Okay, the matter is the, the, the you could say, in, it actually the software is an AI search engine from China, it's a Meta. So it's also high traffic, okay. And also many other software, so all of them just like somehow AI based search engine. So you will see the traffic actually already very high. Okay, now probably the question is, okay, why people want to use AI for, for the web? Okay. Why before nobody want to use that? Because people only want to search the document, right? Okay, so the reason probably is actually the AI makes sense more accurate and reliable and also very fast. And before actually, people, people cannot trust the AI because the AI actually the accuracy is very low. You cannot trust that, but now, and also before, you know, you know, actually many people say, that, okay, when AI generates some kind of content, there is some kind of like a high probability to generate like a, a hallucination and also the information cannot be, tra be tracked, okay. So now you, you see that the accuracy is very high and also the most important thing probably can be explained in this figure, okay. So the information is somehow like, a, we, of course, we hope that we can find all the information. But if we, but the most important thing actually is not to find all the information. The most important thing actually is to find the target information. So one way is that this search engine actually help us expand the, you could say, the information sources. Okay, but it actually cannot help us find the target information. But now AI actually help us find the correct answer. Okay, so that is the most important thing. And also when the accuracy reaches some kind of like a threshold, which means that we actually have some kind of reliable results. So AI-based search engine or AI-based web basically is over there. So probably now the question is that what is the AI or what is the intelligence? Because, because yesterday actually, like uh, we actually discussed with uh, several friends, so people say that the AI actually help, uh, help web, or web probably on the other hand actually provide the data to AI and also help AI, but what is the intelligence? So actually there is a big gap between the human being and also the AI. So talking about the intelligence of human, so we basically say that, oh, we understand the human intention. When we talk about some kind of question, or you just talk something with me. So first thing, I understand your intention. And then I find the target information for you. Okay, so that, that basically is a human being. Well, for AI, what is the, what is the intelligence? So people will say, oh, I just find the, the problem and use the problem to generate some content to you. If the content fits your, your, your requirement, so that's, a, that's a AI. So, Another thing is that I don't have the answer, but I just gave you some kind of hints about this. So another thing is that this actually is the example published, uh, I mean, several years ago by, by a researcher from Google. So this actually some kind of example. So it's quite simple. So the first example is that I give you some example and ask the machine to learn how to do the results. For example, from the First figure, you will say, oh, I just want to attach the red one to the, to the blue one. So that's it. 
But, but only by one example, the human being can abstract this one, right? It's quite simple for human being. But it, to the machine, for example, if we increase the complex, complexity of the, of the problem, how can the machine can handle this? I mean before, like a, a few years, like two years even before. So actually we cannot imagine the machine can handle this. But probably, probably, for example, the GPT-4 and or GPT-5, they probably can handle this. But how the machine abstract such kind of like a concept and also do some kind of like a reasoning for this? Okay, so that's another thing. Well, talk about the, again, about the human being. So we actually have two systems, system one and the system two. System one basically is uh, uh, responsible for, you could say, like a fast answer or hybrid-based answer, like I ask a question, so shall we have, a, have the lunch? Probably you will answer very quickly, yes, of course. But if we ask, okay, I, today I want to treat Wendy for the dinner or for the, for the lunch, so where should we find, the, the, for example, the restaurant? Okay, that is the system two. Because I have to find, I have to think about it. So, so what's your favorite of oh, Wendy and the, where, and the, what, what's the restaurant nearby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that's, that would be somehow like a, a challenge question. That is system two. System two is slow and the logic and also the, the, the answer actually is controllable because you have to think that they were, were careful. But system one basically is a hybrid based. You ask, and I quickly give you an answer. It's somehow like, uh, if you are working on large language model, it's somehow like uh, the embedding based matching. Okay, like uh, you ask a question, I quickly transfer your question to, to embedding space, and then use the embedding to match the, the answer, and quickly give you the answer. But I didn't actually think about this. But the system two basically is that I matching, and also I was thinking about the answer carefully. And uh, you could see that actually I have a working memory to think about this and the reasoning, and the, you could see that is conscious learning or something like that. Well, so basically the AI actually from the beginning is not, if, not now, from the be beginning actually AI basically we hope that the AI could, could thinking, could uh, of course sensing I mean, you recognize the environment, like uh, you recognize everything, text, information, semantics, and also objects in a picture. And also, the, the AI could have emotion, have, un, I mean, understand the intention, so that he actually understand all the motivation or something. And also, the most important thing is to responsible, resp response, respond to the environment. That is somehow like acting. So from the even the very beginning, okay, so actually all the researchers in AI actually working, I mean, just like the agent, I mean, the, the different topics on that. So this actually slides was, was, was a deep thinking about it the, the, by the by Professor Bozhang. So there are three generations basically for AI. The first generation is symbolic. And the second generation is somehow like, like a mixture of expert system and also the deep learning. And now we probably were starting from the deep learning, but we are targeting at the AGI, that is the third generation. I mean, this is somehow different from the three waves of the AI because, you know, actually the three waves probably will say, oh, deep learning basically is the third, third wave. But it actually is somehow different because the third, the third generation basically is a combination, or you could say the starting point is the deep learning. But in the future, the, the target actually is still the AGI, is to make the machine has the reasoning ability and also probably in the future has the thinking ability and the conscious ability or something like that. So Qinghua actually started the F, this efforts uh, at the uh, 1980s, so led by Professor Bo Zhang. So since that time, actually, we have a very huge picture about the AI and covering probably almost every aspect of, of AI. Well, recently, 
So we actually have some thinking. I mean, this time, of course, they, 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 we are thinking about it, the AI. So since 2019, so we have a picture about it. I mean, our AGI. Probably it's not correct, but we, we have that thinking. So our idea is that probably we can build some AI, like a build a machine, to simulate the, the, the human being. Because the human being has two systems, system one and system two. So can we just design something similar to, to, to human being or human brain? So we have the idea, I mean, around that time. So probably we can use the large language model, for example, BERT or GPT, to simulate the system one. Because uh, the, like BERT and the GPT, they can generate an embedding. And then we can quickly give you the answer, like a hybrid-based answer. Well, the system two actually is somehow like a logic reasoning. So we, ha we could have a memory system, short term, long term. And also we have a knowledge graph so that we can do this reasoning. So we could have the two system and the, I mean, combine them together. Well, the last part actually we call it the unconscious conscious learning. We have no idea about, about how, to, how to implement that around that time. But so far, we have some kind of sense about it. For example, self-instruct and also like self-reflection. But anyway, this is the whole picture. I mean, about the, you could say cognition around that time. Well, we actually started our first effort by combining the large language model and the, and the you could say, knowledge graph in the end of 2019 and then we have a paper published, it's uh, the two system recognition. This actually is a question, is an example about the explainable multi hot question answer. So the question, I mean, so far, if you input this question into the, like a chat GPT, it would be quite easy, okay? But around that time, I mean, this is a paper published on ACL 2019. So who is the director of the 2003 film who has the scenes in, uh, in it filmed at a quality cafe in Los Angeles. So the machine, to answer this question, has to understand that Los Angeles, of course, is a city, and the quality cafe is a restaurant, and also find who is the director and did that film in 2003. So it is somehow like we actually use the two systems, system one to search, to find the most important terms, like a quality cafe, and then just the immediately match the document. For example, Quality Cafe is a document from Wikipedia. And then do some reasoning, because we extract candidate information from the document. For example, the old school is a movie, and also Gang in 60 seconds is also a movie. And then just do some reasoning over there, and finally make a decision which one is the correct answer. So that, that, in that way, in that way, I mean, we just simulated the two system, system, and we found that this way actually can significantly improve the performance. Can significantly improve the performance. Okay, I mean, then that the method only use the large language model. Well, only after like a half a year, we just realized, we found that, okay, if we increase the size of the large language model, the model quality, the performance of the model, only use the system one, can surpass the two system recognition. So we actually have no idea about that, but we, we just have a thought about it. Probably, probably, we have no idea about it, what is the boundary of the system one. Probably we are still trying to find the boundary of system one. So that's the reason actually we just, after that, I mean, after 2019, we switched to focus on the system one only. We just try to find the boundary of the system one. And after, probably in the future, we, we just we want to improve the quality of the whole system. We will again study system two. Okay, so if we only talk about the system one, so now the question is, that, okay, so what is the like, uh, architecture of the large language model or, or Shall we only use the GPT? So if we dig in, so actually you will find that for large language model, there are quite a few architectures. So RNN based and the transformer based 
and the, like uh, even the state space model based, so actually happened recently, and also before there are also some, some R model. So you will see, so all the different architectures, so there are just the, like uh, many state of the art research, for example, for the RNN, even there are some kind of like RW QA and also ResNet and also XLS TM recently actually released by the author of the LSTM. And also Transformer, of course, there are quite a few architectures like BERT T5 and also GPT and also Llama. And, uh, and recently also there are some, some other, like even some research from China, for example, DeepSeek. And also for the state space model, so recently, like last year, there are some kind of model like Mamba, and also this year, like Jemba. Okay, so our research actually is about the, the we propose a model which is called a GLM. So this is, a, you could say, similar to GPT, but, the, but they're actually different. So in this talk, I will use some time to introduce our research about the GLM. So probably the, the question is, what is a GLM? So similar to uh, like a GPT and the chat GPT, because uh, I guess, uh, I just assume that everyone here is uh, just the family with uh, GPT and the chat, chat GPT, because it's just uh, so popular over there. But the chat GLM, and uh, based on that, we actually build the chat version, that is the chat GLM. So actually, it's, uh, we are trying to I mean, open the techniques behind the GPT and the chat GPT, because GPT and chat GPT basically is somehow like a secret to everyone, right? But if we hope that we can open the secrets. So the first version of the base model, GM 130B, so that is a base model, it's not a chat model. But the base model can, can, can of course, can generate content, for example, very short, like you see, I attend the, the web conference, and then the, the model can generate like 1,000 words with, uh, I mean, very, very good performance. Well, but it's not for, for chat. And the, the chat model, we call it the chat GM 6B and also chat GM 130B. 130B exactly is built on the top of the GM 130B. Okay, so both model, the smaller version actually is open. It's just open source. You can just download it on your laptop and install that one. And well, the larger one actually you can also access through API. So here is the, the link. So we actually, we, we just trying to open all the research as I mentioned. For example, on GitHub, we have almost 100 large language model based, I mean, related repositories including the chat GM and also the base model and also uh, the image model, I mean text to image and also code generation and the image understanding. So if, you, you, if we combine the stars of the chat model, actually you will see the, it is, the number of the stars of the chat GM, I mean the open version is comparable with Llama, the three version. The red one is the three version of Llama, Llama 1, Llama 2, Llama 3. And the blue one is our, our model, ChatGM 1, 2, 3. And the, the dark one actually is Grok, and also some other, for example, Mistral, and also uh, and some, some open source model from China. And the, this year, actually, the GitHub just the, uh, give some kind of ranks. So this is the top 20 GitHub uh, accounts with, uh, I mean, with some kind of generative AI repository with at least 500 stars. So we are ranked the number five. So OpenAI is number one, Microsoft the second, and Hagen Face and the Google Research. So, and also we actually put our model on the Hagen Face. So on Hagen Face, so you will see there are over 13 million downloads from Hug and Face. So this actually also makes us almost the top of in, in the ranks. And it's quite easy to install the chat GM. So if you are interested, for example, you can just download from Hug and Face. So there are only five, st five steps. And then you could have a chat GM and somehow chat like the right side on your laptop. It's quite easy. And the, so this is reason actually last year, so uh, the top, top 15 most liked organization, Hug and Face. Again, we are ranked number five. 
So we are THU CAC from Tsinghua, and also the number one is a, is a stable diffusion. Okay, so whatever. So what I want to see is that we actually, we just develop some kind of like a, a comparable large language model I mean, similar to ChatGPT. So for, for the chat model, we have ChatGM. For the text to image, we have the Cog view. We, we call it the Cog view, similar to DALI. And also we have the code generation. Uh, we, we call it the code jigs, similar to code, codex. And also we have the web search enhanced uh, generation, WebGM, which is similar to WebGPT. And recently we have the GM 4 way which is similar to the GPT-4 way. So if you want to try, I just quick, quickly give you some examples. So here is the, of course it's similar to the chat GPT, so if you go there, you can ask any kind of question. So I just want to give some kind of like a hard example, because I guess simple example is just like, a, like, a, like a who are you? So it's quite simple, every, every model can do that. But here is some kind of tough one. So this is a mathematical problem, so, so like uh, the Apple Orchard produced uh, like uh, 75 tons of apples every year with a fixed uh, income and blah, blah, blah. There is a mathematical question. So our model, without any tool, without any help of, from the, some other tools like a calculator and or something, just to do that, we can give some, we, we can give very accurate uh, answers. And even compared to the GPT and also cloud, so this result actually is by chat GPT and also cloud. They actually cannot produce the accurate answers. So this is by my exercise. And also for more, I mean, complex mathematical problem. So for example, can you just prove the e to the power of x and the equal to the x to the power of e only and the and only has, and has only and only has one solution. So the model can first give some kind of planning, and then, so for some step, I mean, there is a planning for different steps to answer this question. For some step, if the model think that they cannot give you the right answer, so the model will automatically call, the, for example, Python or some other tool to generate codes and give you the, I mean, the answer of that step. So it's somehow like a combination of the different tools. So this is applied mathematics. Well, we can also generate very high quality, like a high resolution image. For example, here is an example. We can generate 2K times 2K, the image. And also for image understanding, we can also do quite a good results. For example, we ask the question, what color uh, are the clothes of the girl whose hands are holding flower? So if you ask this question and, and uh, upload this picture, so you see that the model has to understand the semantics of the, of the question, and the first they identify where is the flower, and, the, and the who is holding the flower, and then find the clothes of the girl, and finally give, the, give you the color. So on the other hand, of course, you can ask a question, what are the color of the genes of the girl whose hands are not holding flowers? Again, the model has to understand, the, I mean, first understand the intention. So let's again come back to the, the question. So what's the difference, what's the gap between the human being and also the AI intelligence? We have no, we have no idea, but we just, we, we only know is that we see that the current the AI, they could do that. They could do that. Okay, so this is another example. Actually, we can, I mean, I mean, based on the assessment API, we can develop some kind of software. Here is a demo. The assessment is that, okay, we just tell the assessment, change my mobile phone display mode to light mode. So the assistant can automatically scan the screen and find the setting and click that one. I mean, automatically, totally automatically without any help of a human being, and click the setting, and open the setting, and then scan the screen and find the, oh, there is a, like a display bright, brightness, and click that one, and, and show this result, and choose the light mode. And finally, okay, all the settings, the model, the, the, I mean, the AI just automatically plan for that, and finally give you answer. Well, the question is that how to make this happen? Okay, let's just, 
I mean, quickly go through the technical part, okay. So of course, uh, this is, is quite a long time, I mean, I mean, experience, and also we actually spend this, we, we have been working on this for quite a few years, uh, since 2019, so until now it's already five years. So we actually use two years, so to develop the first model, the, that is uh, GOM. So uh, we have this, this paper published on 2000, uh, I mean, released that one, 2021. Uh, that is already after two years. And after that, we actually develop another one that is uh, uh, PTODIN. So that is how to use the large language model to, to generate content. Again, so we actually use two years to do that. At the same time, we actually develop the text to image generation. We call it a COG view. And also have it here available in 2021. So this is basically two lines of research. The first line is the text. You could, you could say large text model. And the second line is uh, text to image re, uh, generation. So for each one, for the text model, we have, the, we have developed the uh, GM 100, 130B. So that is basically the 100B uh, billion scale model. And also we have the child model after that. And finally, we actually, uh, I mean, at the beginning of this year, we have the GM4, which is comparable to the, to the GPT-4. Okay, like all tools and also GM 4 way And for the text to image, I mean, image understanding and the image generation, we have the COG View 2, that's the second generation. And also we have the COG, COG Video. COG Video is, uh, I mean, is similar. The idea is similar to Sola, to text to video generation, but the quality actually around that time is still, I mean, compared to the Sola is still very low. We are still struggling to, to develop a new one. <laughs> okay, so and also the image understanding, for example, visual gym and also some other So, but all the things, all the things, the difference is that, I mean, the most important thing is that we actually make all the, all the materials just open. We publish all the papers about the base model and also the, the large model and also text to image generation model. And also for the green one, I mean, if you look at the green rectangle, so for all the, all the green one, we actually make the model public. Okay, we just make the model public. Okay, so probably now we can talk about the ability about the, the model itself, the GOM. So GOM is similar but different from the GPT. GPT, as we know, is an autoregressive model, so which means that the, such kind of model is, is good at the, unconditional generation, like you say, I attend the, the web conference, so then the model can generate like 100 keywords and the, with the fluent results. Well, oh, the BERT is an auto-encoding model, so such kind of model is good at the natural language understanding. So which means that if you ask a question, for example, so like in China, which river is the second longest? Okay, because this model can look at the both sides, left side and right side. So, but the GPT can only look at the left side. Is that one way, right? So, so BERT basically look at the both sides. It can very good at the blank in fading. Okay, and the third one is T5 like encoder and decoder model. So T5 actually is good at the conditional generation. For example, machine translation. So we actually propose GOM. GOM basically is an autoregressive blank in fading. So what does this mean? It, the, the, the basic idea actually is to combine the, you could say GPT and BERT together. So here is the example. The idea is quite simple. It is still an autoregressive model. For example, given X1 to X4, that is four tokens. We want to predict the next tokens, X5 and X6. So that is the autoregressive way. But to generate X5 and X6, we render mask some kind of token. For example, we render mask X3. So which means that the model has to do two things together. The first one to, is to generate X5 and X6. And the second task is to recover the mask token, X3. So if the model can, for the X3, you, you could imagine that the model actually can look at it like X4 which means that in this way, the model is a bi-directional model. But for X5 and X6, is a one way, it's a single, you, you could say it's just a single direction. 
uh, attention. So finally, the results compared to the, I mean, the, the, the GPT, GPT is basically is a, is a lower triangle attention, but here you see it is a mixture. This part is a bidirectional attention, but this part is a one-way uh, attention. So finally, for some task, for example, the lambda, uh, on, the, on the lambda benchmark, for zero shorty, we actually we can outperform the GPT-3 even. Okay. And this actually is an uh, evaluation uh, of Helm by Stanford University. You can also see that in terms of accuracy, the performance is also similar, almost the similar comparable with the GPT. And the, but for robust, robustness, and also, for example, calibration error, so actually our model can even outperform the, 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 the GPT. For example, calibration error, we are, we are almost the top two. Okay, so the lower the best here. Well, based on the, the, GM, the, the GM architecture, we develop the, the like 100 billion scale model, we call it GM 130B, and also we augment the code for, to improve the, the actually reasoning ability of the model. Because you, you can imagine that the following pipeline, the following pipeline, each step, we actually improve some kind of like, a, you, you, can, you could call it the emergent ability of the base model from some perspective. For example, the code basically improves the reasoning ability of the base model. And also, we actually, the following, following instruction basically improve the following the instruction following ability of the base model. And the web basically improve the, like uh, you could say, the retrieval augmented generation results. And also, the chat actually just improve the, the quality of the, the chat results, and also visual improve the image understanding. So finally, we have the chat GM. Well, of course, you could say the chat GM, just like chat GPT, the first version of the chat GPT is, is still not enough. So because it cannot understand the multimodal, like image and also like audio, right? Okay, but the brain is a complex system. It's a multimodal perception and also multimodal understanding. And also our brain actually has a short term and also long term memory and can do reasoning. So this, this actually means that we cannot stop at a large language model. We actually will have to work on like a visual language model and the, which actually combines the different modalities. Okay, so that we actually can solve complex visual understanding and the reasoning tasks. I can give you an example. So the left side probably is the image understanding tasks, I mean before, before. For example, you upload a picture here, you see that who are showing in the, in the photo, or oh, the answer is quite simple, it's a, a man and a chicken. So for such kind of task, you actually don't need a large language model. You probably just use a bird-based model, a very smaller model, for example, even Unity or some other model, you actually you can achieve a very high quality, high performance. Okay, but what we want to do actually is somehow like a very complex comprehension. So, like the right side, for example, I give you the, there are two examples, but you you could look at only the right example. Okay, so there are somehow like a house price by the U.S. national wide. There are three prices. Okay, that is house price, rent price, and also the, uh, the household income. So the question probably is that which year has the highest growth rate of the, of the house price? Okay, so you said, okay, the, the machine, I mean the AI has to understand what, what's the question you usually ask. And understand, oh, you, have, you actually ask the house price, so that is the blue one. Okay, you, you match the text to the, to the color, and then find the figure here. And then, because you ask what is the highest growth rate, and the house has to calculate the growth rate each year. And finally, give you an answer, oh, the year 2008, 2008 has the highest growth rate. This is what you, we really want to do. Before, actually, for the, I mean, vision language model, so basically, you know that before actually people just want to combine the two modalities together. So text in modality and also image modality. But in most of the model actually just, just freeze one of them and then treat another one. But in this way, actually we can only 
get some kind of like a shallow feature alignment between the text and image. We cannot answer such kind of like a complex questions. So we actually propose a Cog VLM. So the model, the performance actually is quite good. So uh, the idea is that we actually build a trainable vision expert module to bridge the gap of the large language model and the visual encoder. So here is the image feature, and here is the text feature. You could say uh, initial embedding. And then on the top of that, we have a visual expert module. And then, but this one is trainable. So all, all the parameters are, are trainable. So finally, we actually we can get some kind of like a, you could say, you could call it a deep feature alignment between the text and image. Okay, so which make it possible to answer some kind of like a complex questions. So we actually make it open as well. So the, the model actually achieves the state of the art performance on a more, a dozens of course model benchmarks. So, and also for example, it can answer different questions, different tasks like a word knowledge, you ask a question, how many goals did the person in this picture score in 2018 World Cup? So the model first they recognize that this is Cristiano uh, Leonardo, and uh, then check from the knowledge base, not knowledge base, actually the knowledge learned in the model, because such kind of data already trained in the large language model. And then say, okay, so in 2018, so he actually scored four goals. Okay, the right side is understanding and reasoning. So you ask a question, what's the difference of the largest one, the small, smallest one? So the model has to check, oh, how many bars, how many bars there? And what is the largest one? And which one is the lowest one? And calculate the difference between them. And finally give you the answer, okay. Well, this is the image understanding. And on the other hand, actually, is how to generate high-resolution uh, image based on text. Because to generate, directly generate high-resolution Im image is really tough. So we actually have a uh, two-stage method. The first one is a base model. We actually generate like a 500 times 500, you could say, you could call it the base generation. And then after that, we have a super resolution stage, so which can just the generate high quality, high resolution, like 1K and 2K, and the theoretically even 8K. Okay. So finally, this is the, the we call it the laying super resolution. I can show you some results. So here is the results actually, I mean, performance of this model compared to the stable diffusion. Because stable diffusion is open, we can easily compare it to the, on the large benchmark. So basically we actually has, I mean, if we ask some kind of like a user to evaluate that, so 77% of the, of the case, we actually can, we can win over stable diffusion, and also which actually is much faster than stable diffusion. Well, now, so far we already have the base uh, abilities in this model. We have text to image, image understanding. But actually the model itself is still somehow like a, like a, okay, is somehow like a brain. But the model just like a, the picture we, we shown. We hope that the agent can, can actually react to the environment, can connect to the environment, right? But it, so far actually it's only like a brain in the water. We ask some kind of question and it is respond, right? It cannot actually just interact with the environment. We hope that the model is not just to uh, recognize the information from the environment and also do some action and even learn from that. So this is a way actually we call it, you could say, you could say a real agent. So for the GLM, we actually call that, that version as a GM four-way or tools. Or tools mean that the model itself can learn in what kind of case, what kind of environment, what kind of tools it can leverage, and to answer what kind of question, and to learn what kind of information from the environment. Okay, so, but how to do that? Because you know that in many cases, so people say, that, okay, I can train this model so that the model actually has some kind of agent ability. But in traditionally, traditionally, actually, this is case by case. For example, you say, oh, 
I want to do some kind of like an operating system, which allows the model to like manage some kind of like commands to manage the system, or something like that. But it's only case by case. But we propose an agent tuning. So this method is very general. It can generalize these abilities to many, many different tasks. So we actually use a, like a llama as an example. So you see, this is, a, this is a without agent tuning. The agent abilities, which means the model call different functions, the performance is very low. But with the, our agent tuning, we can actually improve even llama quite a lot. I mean, this is the in-domain. In-domain means that it's on the same task. But even out-domain, out-domain means that the task actually, the model didn't seem before. Okay, even the performance can improve like 176%. The performance has been improved quite a lot. So finally, we actually incorporated like a code interpreter, image generation, web browsing, and the function call, I mean, all the different, like a, you could say the functions into the, into the GM for way or tools. And the, you, you see, this is the result. For some of the tools used, like web search and the function call, we even outperform GPT-4. And the, for some, kind, some, some others, like a code interpreter, it is almost similar to, comparable to the GPT-4. Well, with such kind of like API, you could say the all tools API, you can very easily to develop some your own APP. So we call it the GM, GMS API. So you can build a, like a talk to your own agent. So here is an example. You can just say very simple to use some kind of language or use the very simple coding, probably a few lines, and to develop your own agent, like this one. Uh, please tell a story to generate a picture book. Like you only input the, the, the a question, only you input a very, like a very simple sentence. And the model can generate a story, and for each, pic, for each story, and, and, I mean, each snippet, yeah, and it can generate a, a picture, the hair. So, and also, here is a more example. So we can use this one to generate, for example, to develop an assistant, like a, the first one is to post a poll about which one to buy. You said is the model, the assistant can manage, can understand your question, and go to the poll website, and the, to, automatically, just the automatically build a poll for you. The question and the different choice, and the finally, for example, the first one is a different choice, like lipstick and also some other choices. And the middle one is another example, and the right one is again another example. So do you want to give it a try for the different the, the, the GMS API? So if you're interested, you can go to this, this website, just go there, and uh, I guess you can get, get some kind of like free tokens and develop your own like a public API and, uh, and a fine tune API and also private model instance. So just the, this is probably is a takeaway. Yeah, beyond that, probably uh, I, I will use two minutes to think about it, what is beyond, because uh, the large language model is still not enough, actually. So because uh, traditionally it's only text mo modality. And recently there are, uh, the chat model actually could do some kind of like a modeling with a multi-modality. But while we are still working on like a multi-model virtual assistant, how to develop the, the real assistant for ourselves. And also how to make a real world assistant, like embodied AI. So we are thinking about this. So this is just a quick, quick thinking about this. So probably on the top of existing model, like a GM or GPT or many other models, the first thing is to study the native multimodal language model, and also think about the AI safety and the AI security. And on the top of that, we could build like a large language model operating system to solve more complex tasks. So here is some kind of thinking about the, the, the operating system. So I guess the first thing we, we hope to do is uh, the, to add some kind of like memory or self-reflection. So because this is, is very important to the machine to, I mean, 
to think about if, for example, if the machine generates some kind of content, but if the generated content is correct or not, the human being will think about this and probably correct that. So the left side is human being. We call it the P PDCA. So planning and do it and check. If it is wrong, the, 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 the human being will correct that. But how can we make that happen to the machine? So we actually, we, and also in the future, so how, how can we, I mean, just the, develop some kind of like a web operating system so that we can develop all the different web applications or use the web just by, with the help of AI. Give you an example. Here is just an example because we are still working on this. So we call it auto web GM. So this one, we just give the question, for example, modify the address of the order, uh, number two, 200 landline to the following address. So actually, I, I just use this language. And then the, the model will automatically check the website, this website, and you see that it actually find the number automatically, totally automatically, without any heuristics. And they find the order and click that one and try to modify that totally, totally based on the only questions you submit. And the, the following, all the operation has been done by the machine with the, I mean, the operating system. But of course, this is not enough because in the future, we hope that the model can, can do, I mean, not just the virtual assistant, but also embodied, and also even for the future, it can interact with, other, with our human being. So there are quite a lot of research that we actually we can do. So anyway, I want to summarize my talk. So today I'm talking about the web and also AI and also large language model. Uh, but in the future, actually, there are quite a lot of things we have to do about the auto web and the web OS and many, many other research. So. Anyway, so this is some kind of, I, I basically just the share our experience and also our thinking about the AI, AGI for the, for the web. So if you're interested, you can go to our website to check more about the paper. Anyway, I want to, finally, I want to thank you, our collaborators from the Tsinghua and also Zipu. Okay, thank you very much.